Welcome back. A few videos ago, I refurbished my Proxon BFW 40 /E spindle motor and I wanted to have a look into the power supply of that thing. However, Proxon thwarted that attempt. They did that by adding that security triangle screw to the enclosure. However, meanwhile, my Chinese friend sent me some triangle security bits. Anyway, card to that refurbishing video here and link in the description. Now let's continue with our endeavor and have a look-see inside. And that looks like a very old style classical arrangement. Uh, mains AC comes in here, goes to the front to a mains AC switch, which switches both neutral and live. And then uh, mains AC goes to the primary of that transformer here and the secondary goes to the bridge rectifier here screwed onto uh, some bent aluminium sheet. Oh, by the way, there is, can I zoom down in there? Can you see that there is another TO220 package there, which is doing <coughs> all the work, I guess. Um, but the rest is somehow here on the front PCB, which we will have to get out to. Uh, one remark to that transformer, it's also very classical. So primary and secondary are wound in parallel, not on top of each other. And there is additional isolation here between primary and secondary. So they are basically each winding has its own plastic chamber uh, that contains it. So uh, yeah, very safe. Just trying to get out the front plate, which is hopefully not that complicated. Was that really necessary? I don't know. Probably yes. Okay. Yeah, that was simple so far. I have to zoom out a little bit, so just a second. Can't zoom out any further, so I have to change the angle. And now let's see how to proceed best. Uh, oh, is that screwed to the front somehow? Oh, let me uh, move. Okay, <laughs> got it. Uh, gutted it or got it. Okay, I cleaned that thing from the outside, but in fact there are some uh, <laughs> aluminium chips in here. Maybe I, yeah, I'll take the vacuum and clean that up first before we continue. Much better. Okay, so let's have a look at the PCB from the front. And I wish I could tell you there are some secrets, but no, there is <laughs> an electrolytic, one microfarad, a 100K port, a 560 ohm resistor, a normal bipolar transistor base amateur collector, the SCR, so uh, yeah, that was a TO220 package, another resistor, 560 ohms, a resistor, 1K, and yeah, that's, that's it, plus the LED. And I guess the 1K resistor, yeah, uh, that's a serious resistor for the LED. Um, yeah, that's all. Okay, let me uh, re reverse engineer the circuit. I mean, I probably don't need a photo from the PCB. Uh, just a sec. 
and here it is but meanwhile it's far too hot yeah it's approaching 30 degrees c here and too humid to <laughs> explain that thing in detail uh, so just yeah broad strokes here but don't you worry we will have a look at the oscilloscope later on and that will make everything clear i hope so we're getting rectified AC in here and uh, right at the beginning with the series resistor of 1K, the R3, we have our power LED. The main current path is of course from plus here through our SCR into the output to our brush DC motor and the output is filtered via a 1000 microfarad capacitor 50 volt. And for the SCR to become conductive, it needs a little current pulse in here. So the gate has to be positive compared to the cathode. And one short pulse is enough. It stays conductive as long as current is flowing here. That is, the voltage here is higher than the voltage there. But since we are feeding in this circuit just rectified AC, which goes, yeah, 100 times a second down to zero, that SCR will stop conducting, yeah, every, after every half wave somewhere. Unless it is triggered again, and that brings us to our trigger circuit here. So yeah, assuming that there is some current going into the base, trigger current for the gate is simply supplied here via that R2. So some current limiting through that bipolar NPN transistor via collector emitter into the gate. For that to happen, our base must be 0.6 volts above our emitter. So let's assume for the moment that this capacitor is completely discharged and as soon as we get here a rising voltage, it's slowly charging through R2, the potentiometer where we can regulate and in parallel that one mega ohm resistor. And as soon as the voltage reaches here 0.6 volts, yeah, as long as no current is flowing, we have no current drop here uh, via R1, we get some current flowing here and therefore we get trigger current flowing here. And how fast in each half wave that C1 capacitor is charging is obviously controlled by that potentiometer. Now let's have a look at the oscilloscope. I'm just probing the output of the bridge rectifier and the output to the brush DC motor, which is currently not connected. And yeah, you can see here the rectified half waves. We will zoom in in a second from the bridge rectifier and the output voltage. One division is 10 volts, so output is currently at move. 8 volts or something and peak out of the bridge rectifier 10, 20, 30, 40, yeah, a little 45 volts, 46 volts, something like that. And if I turn the potentiometer now, turn up the volume, you see the output voltage. Oh, let's do that while I'm zoomed in. Okay. If I turn now the pot, you see that the output voltage is increasing and our zero lines are down here, okay? But our minimum voltage from the bridge rectifier is also increasing and I can turn up, yeah, the output voltage without load to, yeah, 44 volts or something like that. And of course, it's a big capacitor. So if I turn my potentiometer down again, uh, it takes a while until it's back to eight volts. Now, why is the output voltage of the bridge rectifier also increasing? That's because the voltage here in that output filter capacitor finds ways to leak back here to the probe connected at the output of the bridge rectifier. Yeah, some ways it always finds. 
Now let's try the same thing with <coughs> some load connected and I will put that out of the way on a foam pad here at the side so it won't create too much noise. So let's switch on and nothing happens. Oh, I have to switch on the spindle too. Ah, we get waveforms. Okay, I'm triggering now of uh, mains AC and you can see here our SCR is only triggered every second half wave. So the capacitor is charging very slowly. And if I increase now the volume, the power, uh, can we, can we, can we, yeah, 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 here at that level. Now we are triggering every half wave and uh, you should also see that we are, will be triggering much earlier in the half wave. So this is really also uh, some kind of phase control. Yep. So, and that's the maximum. So you can see here by the unimpeded voltage rays uh, out of the bridge rectifier that we, with that circuit, never trigger at, yeah, the earliest possible point in time. Uh, that cannot uh, happen with um, such a few number of uh, components. But uh, yeah, Proxon thought that's okay. Now, uh, I want to have a look at the voltage as the small capacitor that feeds the base of the transistor. Give me a second to set everything up. Okay, ignore that brownish curve here for the moment. Uh, the important one is that pinkish curve or lilac curve, pinkish or lilac, whatever. Uh, that's our voltage at the small capacitor that discharges into the base of our transistor. And here you can see after the last triggering of the SCR, it's charging up, charging up until it has the right voltage and then the SCR is triggered and the capacitor is discharged and it is charging again. And if I increase a little bit the power, yeah, this is an artifact probably. You see that the charging, yeah, happens faster. And yeah, this is not really a measured curve. Uh, it's a calculated curve and therefore it looks a little bit strange. Uh, let me explain. So here's what I did. My first probe was uh, connected here at the output of the bridge rectifier. Yeah, yellow trace. And yeah, that was the ground for my probes, for all my probes, of course. The second trace, the blue one, was just here at the output and then I connected a third probe here at the plus end of that capacitor. But of course uh, we would measure the voltage from here to here. Uh, what we wanted was to measure the voltage from here to that rail, the output rail, because that's the rail that's in this case significant to see if there could be any current flow or if there is enough voltage difference here between the base and the emitter. And so that lilac curve on the scope was just the, uh, yeah, my orange trace minus the blue trace with the math function and uh, you saw it was not perfect, but yeah, you, you got the, the broad picture at least, I hope. And now I have to put everything back together again. Getting everything back together shouldn't be too hard. Just make sure that I have that potentiometer in the most anti-clockwise, counterclockwise position. So on minimum and then it should all 
fit in here again somehow hopefully with the LED uh, uh, come on there we go and then we slide the whole front plate back in again okay that was simple so mains AC goes back again here that was also easy enough we route the cable from the transformer uh, I guess that's it more or less <laughs> uh, exposure is a little bit huh and now we add the knob with uh yeah this should be one on top uh, uh, yeah one should be on top i guess i'm a little bit <clears throat> I should have made a photo. Let's put the one on top. That give, gives us, uh, let me go down here a little bit. Zoom in a little. Uh, overexposure. I can't do anything about that. So one. Okay. Now it goes from there to five okay i guess that's that's acceptable somehow five being the maximum okay at least the maximum is okay uh yeah <clears throat> and now we have to screw on the cover again the right way around oh, easy enough the triangle security bit hopefully the right one and that's it well almost I could uh, put my collets here back in again in the right order that's it that was the teardown <laughs> of the proxon bfw 40 slash e power supply for the brushed dc motor spindle and yeah till next time Bye.